Good evening, and welcome to Big Z Sports' presentation of high school softball. Tonight in this matchup, the Dover Tornadoes host the Indian Valley Braves. Tonight's game is presented by the Tusker Ravis Insurance Agency. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Wayne Door, Wood Electric, Wendy's, Unified Insulation, and McInturf Realty. Now let's head to the field with Big Z Sports. Welcome to Dover City Park for this afternoon's softball contest between the Indian Valley Braves who traveled a little bit up north. The Lady Braves to take on the Dover Lady Crimson Tornadoes here on the turf at Dover City Park. Chris Kale, my man Aaron Stump sitting alongside and of course the Claxon Communications crew of Casey Claxon, Aiden Garbrandt and Brody Stevens. Today's coverage all brought to you by the Tuscross Insurance Agency. And uh, welcome into the Wood Electric pregame show. And Stumpy, this should be a good pitching duel between Jenna Malk and uh, Shelby Gossett, who are two of the best pitchers that we're going to find in this area. Yeah, when the, uh, the schedule came out uh, early in the season, I think we both looked at each other and said, uh, yeah, circle that one. That's going to be a, a big one, uh, both from a confidence standpoint and uh, really you got two bigger schools in this area competing against each other. So it's, it's part of that dominance pride that you have too and uh, really looking forward to a great softball game today. Yeah, it should be a good one. We finally got nice weather. I mean, my goodness, I, I got shorts and a T-shirt <laughs> on. You got a T-shirt on like we're, we're comfortable. We, we must have communicated. Communicated telepathically because we both wore blue. Hey, that's scary for us to, to it, tell. I mean, people. it is. I don't know, but regardless, we we've got blue on, so it's it's good. Um, we're ready to go. This turf is is awesome. It's been a game changer. Uh, you know, when we go to our uh, in the dugout interviews, brought to you by the Cush Financial Group in a second. Uh, head coach Hannah Duff talks about you know how many games that they've had moved from away games to home games because of the turf it's been kind of a game changer to make sure you get games in and uh man there always used to be a big drainage problem when my kid was <laughs> playing up here and the batter's box was all muddy and everything else and now you don't have to worry about it it's it's uh it's beautiful dover's done a great job yeah we got several complexes around this area just beautiful facilities and like you said mother nature has not been uh, very helpful with us so any chance you do get a facility like like this, I mean, I, I hope the kids really appreciate it. I hope the communities appreciate it because you're absolutely right. Uh, the Dover community has put a lot of money, uh, and it looks great, and the, these kids are loving every minute of it. Absolutely is well worth it. We appreciate the uh, Tornado Club for, you know, chipping in and getting this done and, and all the uh, anonymous donations and different things. Uh, whoever had part in getting the money paid so that this turf could get in. It was a good thing. And, you know, when you look behind us, the, the baseball field has it. It's only right for the softball field to have it for the ladies, and uh, it, it's pretty awesome. So we are glad to be here. Should be a good one between the Lady Braves and the Lady Crimson Tornadoes this afternoon. It is time to take a break during our Wood Electric pregame show and go inside the dugout with our coaches brought to you by the Cush Financial Group right after this timeout with Big C Sports and Claxon Communications. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes good luck this season. Are you ready to give your home a new look? Look no further than Wayne Door, your one-stop shop for all your residential needs. Garage doors, entry doors, windows, and patio doors, Wayne Door has everything you need to upgrade your curb appeal. With 24-7 emergency service, you can trust their technicians to be there when you need them most. Stop by the Dover showroom on State Route 39 or visit waynedoor.com and let the experts help transform your house into the home of your dreams. Wayne Door, more than just garage doors, from the people you can trust. 
Lockwood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Welcome back to Dover City Park. I'm Chris Kalen. Joining me in the dugout, brought to you by the Cush Financial Group, is Indian Valley head coach, Dusty Braun. And coach, you have a very experienced team, but you have a freshman leading the way at the plate. You have a sophomore who's given you good innings in the circle. Talk about those two. Well, I mean, I, I, I want to be honest with everybody. You know, Natalie Musser's a special player. She's a freshman who's played at elite travel ball level. We knew what we were getting when she was coming in. Sometimes you always want to rush the issue. You know, last year's team might have been a hair more season than what this team is as far as overall, but she's a special, special player, not only athletically, her leadership skills and work ethics high. You know, you go to the two pitchers, Aubrey's the younger of the two, uh, she's, she's pitched well. You got to play a little better defense behind her than you do Shelby. Shelby's logged the, the bulk side of the innings, but both of them have been really instrumental, and when you lose a key piece to your puzzle, you know, you wonder if that piece will ever fit back in the same square. Coach, Shelby's been good. Gabby and both Ash and Laney have played well. Talk about those leaders. Well, I try to tell people all the time, I'm never sure if it's having good to have nine seniors or if it's better to have three or four. Sometimes, you know, the playing time gets snipped when you get some young girls coming up through. But the seniors have been special. Uh, it's a special group for me. Uh, they've stuck it out. You know, we started with 13. We're down to nine. And I really like them. Uh, Gabby Mead's a special player. I, I probably, you know, if you probably asked her, she'd say the same thing. Uh, if you lean on somebody on your team, you lean on someone the biggest post in there and she's the biggest post and uh, I probably don't cut her many breaks but I like her Laney's a vocal leader she's the she's the lover of the group uh, Laney's never has a bad day and she's a shortstop and two hitter and she leads by example does some service out there for us but I love all my seniors uh, I, I'll, I'll miss this group more more than anything I've never had a group this big right coach Nice weather here this afternoon. Haven't seen that much so far in the first half of the season. Talk about how the girls will adjust to nice little warmer weather conditions. Well, I'm trying to be this realistic coach. You know, last week was our week off for the league, so you have all non-league games, and, you know, we're off for 10 days. We show up at Strasburg on Saturday. You get the LSU commit Maori right out of the rip, 67 mile an hour, and you, you wonder if your team's prepared because you've been inside, you've been inside, you've been inside. You haven't, you know, you're live, but you're really not live. And I mean, you're soft tossing stuff. I, I really think our preparation in that game, I, I left there happy. And you say, oh, you got beat 7-2 and 14-1, to but I left there happy. I mean, we put the ball in play. We only struck out eight times first game, six, second time. I was pleased with where we're at and being inside for 10 days. So uh, I think we're, we're, we're heading in the right direction. Finally, Coach, a feisty Dover team awaits you. You come here onto this new beautiful turf. What do you expect out of the Tornadoes, and how are you going to beat them? Well, I, I get a cheat sheet. I, I got their lineup before we start, so, you know, I think Jenna Mulk is a special, special, not only player, athlete in this county. I, I don't think anybody's going to look at Jenna and think anything less. Uh, I got the honor to coach her last year in the underclassman all-star. Uh, superb, smart, hardworking, intelligent. She's a great pitcher. I, I say you're seeing two of the best pitchers here in the county right here on the same team. You know, Dover's going to scrap her around uh it's the challenge for my girls can you put it in play can you score runs and then force it back on their side for them to score runs so uh i, I think we're headed for a 3-1 3-2 ball game that that's my thing now if we score six runs and still get beat uh, I'm, I'm telling you right now i'm going home happy man <laughs> all right coach <laughs> thank you very much good luck tonight thank you guys for the coverage and go braves all right that is head coach dusty braun brought to you by the cush financial group when we return i'll be joined by dover head coach hannah duff after this on big z sports Find your path to success at Buckeye Career Center. Buckeye students earned over 3,000 industry-recognized credentials this past school year, and over 130 students participated in our school-to-work program or an internship at a local business. Let us help you get a jump start on your future in a career of landscaping and turf management, pharmacy technician, HVACR, CAD development and design, or any of our over 30 programs. Enroll today for next school year by visiting BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. 
When you think pizza, think of Me Cheese Pizza with locations in West Lafayette and Janet and Hutton to serve you. A Me Cheese Pizza offers your favorite traditional pizzas as well as specialty pizzas, subs, wings, and salads. Everything from the dough to the sauce is made fresh daily. Right now at A Me Cheese, with the purchase of a large or an extra large pizza at regular price, receive a free medium cheesy bread. Try one today in West Lafayette or Janet and Hutton. Big city taste for a small city price. Learn more. Find Amici's on Facebook. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what you need, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Wendy's new breakfast two for three dollar biggie bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best: sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee, or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar biggie bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. Welcome back to the Wood Electric pregame show. I'm Chris Kale. Joining me in the dugout, brought to you by the Cush Financial Group, is Dover head coach Hannah Duff. And coach, talk about how your first season has gone so far, about halfway through now your first year as head coach. It's been great. Um, the easiest thing has been the group of girls. They're so coachable. Um, they listen. They, they want to get better. Um, so far, it's been great. I'm loving it. Coach, a ton of different weather conditions you guys have been thrown at this year. It's been ridiculous. How nice is it to have turf here at Dover, this beautiful turf? It's been great. We've had a lot of games that have been changed to home. Um, it's always nice to have more home games. Um, it's definitely been beneficial getting games in. Coach, you have a sophomore in Jenna Malk and also a freshman in Olivia McHugh kind of leading your team right now. Talk about those two specifically. They're great. They kind of feed off of each other. It's great um, when Jenna can get on and then Liv can bunt and move her around, especially with Jenna's speed. Um, they've been super beneficial to the team. And a, a one-hit shutout last night from your other pitcher on the mound. you gotta got to feel good to have two girls you can go to anytime in the circle. Yes, it's definitely great knowing that no matter who you put out there, the job's going to get done. And they've improved every single game. We've seen improvements. Coach, a feisty Indian Valley team comes in here today. Talk about what you expect out of them and what it's going to take your kind of your keys to victory this afternoon. I expect a, a good game. I don't know a whole lot about Indian Valley, um, but I expect it to be a good competitive game. We're going to need to pitch to, to their batter as well, and we're going to need to defend their batter as well. So I think it's going to be a good game. Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck tonight. Thank you. That was Dover head coach Hannah Duff, brought to you by the Cush Financial Group. When we come back, the winning starting lineups, the Buckeye Career Center first pitch right here on Big Z Sports with Claxton Communications. Live more comfortably this winter with the help of Unified Insulation Systems. Unified Insulation Systems is a full-service insulation and weatherization provider that can show you how to properly insulate your home or business. With good insulation from Unified Systems, you can prevent your gutters from freezing and get rid of your high-energy bills. Call Jeremiah Thomas today for your free quote at 330-773-7377 or visit unifiedinsulation.com. Call Unified Insulation Systems today, your most trusted name in insulation. Welcome back to Dover City Park. Getting ready to go. I want to thank Hannah Duff and Dusty Braun for doing our Cush Financial Group in the dugout interviews. Chris Kale and Aaron Stump here with you. Stumpy, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with our Wendy's starting lineups. And, uh, you know, going to start with the visiting Indian <laughs> Valley Braves. I don't want to be the Dover honk, so you get to do the Dover Lady Tornadoes today. <laughs> so your starting lineups again brought to you by Wendy's. Leading off for the Indian Valley Braves, wearing number six is Natalie Musser. She plays center field. She is a freshman. She bats 542 on the year, 13 hits, leads the team. Number four, Laney Abil, the shortstop. She is a senior, batting 409 on the year. The first baseman, number 21, Gabby Mead, bats in the third hole, and Gabby, a senior, Averaging 391 on the year with three home runs. Brooklyn Sanders, the designated player, number 25. She'll back clean up. Sanders 
Averages 30, 333 on the year. She is a senior. Number one, Ashley Baker bats in the five hole. She plays second base. Ashley, a senior, averages 375. Celeste Rummel is the third baseman. She wears number 13. She is a senior with a 375 average. Bella Weaver, the catcher behind the dish, uh, wears number three, bats in the seven hole. She is a senior with a 375, I'm sorry, is a sophomore with a 307 average. Sadie Dryden, number nine, the left fielder. And uh, Sadie is a senior, 384 average. And batting ninth for the Indian Valley Braves, number eight, Nadia Alice House in right field. And Nadia is a senior with a 333 average. Again, for your Dover Crimson Tornadoes. we got to get through these quick. We're ready to play some ball, well, aren't we? You can, just give the defen- ju- you can just give the defensive positions right. if you want, so we're <laughs> ready to go. Leading off number four, your pitcher, Jenna Mulk. Uh, second and playing shortstop. I'm sorry, third base is number one, Olivia McHugh. And I tell you what, we'll get the rest of these lineups once we get going here. Let, let, let's do that. Of course, our first pitch today brought to you by the Buckeye Career Center. It was a strike from Jenna Malk in the circle for the Dover Tornadoes. And again, leading off Natalie Musser, the center fielder. So Malk, the 0-1 count to Musser. She's going to slap it foul for strike number two. So Jenna Malk, again, uh, at catcher Maddie Bannum. Susie Peltz at first. Sarah Clark at second. Laney Kohler at short. Olivia McHugh at third. Kara Lent in left. uh, Charlie Reese in center and Madeline Faulkner in right for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. The 0-2 pitch from Jenna Malk on the outside. First ball to Natalie Musser. Tell you, great pitch up there right at the top of the strike zone. Forced the umpire to make a call and a great job of uh, Natalie not going for it. Speaking of the umpires, we appreciate them hanging on for us a little bit. And a nice slap hit there, but right back to Jenna Malk. And records the out for out number one. So Musser bounced it right back to Malk. Good contact there, but right at her. Yeah, almost a little bit of a slap bunner right there. Takes that ball or that bat right flat right through the strike zone. Makes good contact. Got a little bit of speed, but uh, nice play there by Jenna Malk. Throwing to first base. Laney Avio, number four, will bat in the second spot. 409 average on the year. She is a senior. Will bat from the right-hand side with one down here against Jenna Malk. Malk fires. Strike number one. Jenna Malk on the year. An 082 ERA, 53 strikeouts, six walks in 34 innings. Again, she's got some good height on her yeah. and a great stride, and that ball is just that much closer coming right at home plate. And she's got some good heat, great combination. And, and speaking of heat, Carol Lent uh, yesterday threw a 6 nothing one-hit shutout against Carrollton. Charlie Reese, three hits for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. And taking strike number two is Avil on the outside part of the plate. Good spot for Malk there. And uh, look, if she works ahead in the count, she's she's tough to handle. Yeah, no it, doubt. That's one of the advantages, and, and every pitcher tries to stay ahead of that count. She does it consistently and just hangs around those edges. Strike three, first one of the evening for Jenna Malk as she retires Laney Avil. You always want to make that umpire's job really difficult, hang right around the edges and force them to make those calls, and she's done a great job with her placement. Gabby Mead, the senior first baseman, she is she, – she can get a hold of the ball. We'll just put it that way, <laughs> right? Three home runs, 391 average, and she can just hit the cover off of the ball. Malk's got to be careful here. The 1-0 pitch with two outs. To senior Gabby Mead. Gets a piece of it. Evens the count at one and one. Two down just underway. Top of the first between Dover and Indian Valley. I think, what do we got? Are we 200 feet all the way around? It's uh, it's real right. close to that. Yes, yeah, center might be a little bit More. deeper, but not much. It, it's only 200 to the porches, though. But you're right. She's got plenty of power to uh, poke one out. Oh. Now. Not oh, much of a wind at all today. You get a yeah, hold there, of one, it's going to go. Yeah, there is no doubt. If she, if she gets into one, it is it is gone. The 2-1 from Jenna Malk to Gabby Mead. Strike two on the outside part of the plate. Good spot for Jenna Malk. Just sizzled that one in there. I'm sure that one was pushing mid to upper 60s. 
<laughs> at least. You're not going to watch it too long. No. <laughs> you no. better make that decision quick. The 2-2. Two -two. And Meade got into it, but just a little bit high. And Charlie Reese records the out. That's going to do it for the first half inning. No score, no runs, no hits, no errors. Tornadoes to the plate when we come back on Big Z Sports. At Kaufman Realty and Auctions, you've got options. Your property is unique, and our agents know how to sell it. Whether it's a traditional listing or live auction, we'll earn you top dollar. Our agents will utilize whichever method of sale works best. When buying or selling your next home, call on Kaufman. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at packdrilling.com. Welcome back. Dover City Park. Chris Kell, Aaron Stump here with you. Now the uh, batting order for the Dover Lady Tornadoes, Mr. Aaron Stump. Batting first and pitching. Jenna Malk in the two hole. Number five, or I'm sorry, number one playing shortstop. Olivia McHugh batting third at shortstop. Number eight, Laney Kohler. Batting fourth, number two, and playing center field, Charlie Reese. Batting fifth, number 10, at first base, Susie Peltz. Six is uh, the catcher, actually, number nine, Maddie Bantam. Batting seventh is number seven, playing second base, Sarah Clark. Batting eighth is number 17, playing left field, Carol Lint. And batting ninth and playing right field, number five, Madeline Faulkner. And again, Shelby Gossett on the mound for the Indian Valley Braves, Bella Weaver behind the plate, Gabby Mead at first, Ashley Baker at second, Laney Abiel at short, Celeste Rummel at third, Sadie Dryden in left, Natalie Musser in center, and Nadia Alice House in right field. So the Buckeye Career Center first pitch of this half inning is a strike from Shelby Gossett. So Jenna Malk on the season. 552 average, three home runs, 12 RBIs, four doubles, seven steals, 11 runs, 16 hits, all <laughs> leading the Dover Lady Tornadoes, of course. Are you saying that's a that's good to this point? Is that, is that <laughs> I'm what you're saying, trying to say? I'm saying that's a pretty yeah. darn good leadoff that's hitter if you say that. And, oh, oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> she's only a sophomore, right? <laughs> so Jenna Malk at the plate and Gossett. Has her pitch fouled oh. back and absolutely smoked that truck back there by the batting cages, and that is why you don't park there, Stumpy. There's our first dinger right there. Wrong yep. way. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you don't park there. Uh, the one-two from Shelby Gossett to Jenna Malk. And fouled off again. Is it going to find another car? Ooh. Well, that wouldn't no, good. it went right yeah, between yeah, the two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's some sick entertainment we're watching it, now. It is. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to be watching the softball <laughs> game, and instead we're watching cars get pegged by <laughs> softballs. Shows you where our mind <laughs> is. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Ooh, Gossett hit her. And Jenna Malk going to head down to first base. Just got a piece of her. I think she's all right. <laughs> Coach Jim Morris down at first base. Coach Mo says, hey, she's good to go. So now stepping in, Olivia McHugh, the third baseman. Where's number one? She is only a freshman. And uh, we talked in the dugout interviews about the two underclassmen leading this team. Well, Olivia McHugh, one of those underclassmen, she bats 435, three doubles as she gets a bunt down there. Gossett going to fire over, retire the side, but she does her job on the sack bunt to move Jenna Malk to second. Again, great small ball by Dover right there. Again, moving Jenna Malk to second base. Got him in running position, one out, and 
Here you go. In in McHugh, she's got ten hits, which is second on the team, right? Seven RBIs, three doubles. I don't know that I even try and bunt her there, but I get you're trying to play small ball early on. It's amazing how much that first run makes such a difference in any game, and, and if it's baseball or softball, just that mentality of scoring that first run's huge. Laney Kohler at the plate now. The shortstop wears number eight. Laney a senior, 276 average, an RBI, three runs, two doubles. She's got red eyes in the dugout. I didn't even recognize her. I'm sure they came from her dad. <laughs> My daughter played with her older sister, Lexi. Lexi used to be a catcher for Dover. Many moons ago, it seems like now. <laughs> As Gossett will fire and strike number two. So the 1-2 one, one count now on Kohler, the shortstop, with Jenna Malk standing down at second. One down after the sacrifice bunt from Olivia McHugh. Shelby Gossett getting ready to fire. The one-two, and it's fouled off, and oh, almost having a play back there was Weaver. Just couldn't corral it. Made a con little contact with the fence. Good try on that, though. Yeah, we were talking uh, during warm-ups. We were watching her, and she's got a nice rocket yeah, behind the uh, the plate back there. She she seems to be very talented as a catcher back there. That would have been an unbelievable catch if she was able to make it. Gossett had nine strikeouts, and Kohler just staying alive. Gossett had nine Ks in a 9-1 to -one win last night over Ridgewood. Natalie Musser, four singles for Dusty Bronze Indian Valley Lady Braves as uh, they picked up another win last night. Gossett getting the call again. Again, uh, you know, there was a little, well, we'll get into this in a minute. Strike three, Gossett gets strikeout number one. So two outs now. Well, just like Jenna Mulk, Shelby Gossett again, nothing down the middle. Huh. We've seen it right at the knees or yeah. just above the letters on uh, both teams, and neither pitcher giving into the batters, and we're in here for a real treat today, I think. Ooh, nice off-speed there, speed pitch there, and fouled back by Charlie Reese, the center fielder. Reese, the junior, 241 average, two triples, two doubles, four RBIs, three runs on the uh, season so far for the junior center fielder who bats in the cleanup spot and you see why she's you know got plenty of she can pepper it around we'll put it that way as Meade fires high to even the count at one and one <laughs> I was waiting on come you to on, say man. something. Come on, come on, keep it coming. <laughs> like when Willie Mays Hayes slides into second, the baseman says, come on, come on. <laughs> Gossip's uh, ball inside. Uh, Two funny. and one. No score, bottom of the first. Two outs. The 2-1 pitch from Shelby Gossett after her first strikeout. Of the game, fires it in there. Ooh, just Ooh. missed. Three and one, the count. Gossett maybe just missed a little low. That was right right parking around the knee area, wasn't it? That's a great pitch again. If you want, you want that umpire to struggle, you know, exactly where that strike zone is, and uh, that was a great pitch. Strike. From Gabby Mead needed it. Or, I'm sorry, Shelby Gossett, sorry. Gabby Mead down at first base. She's not pitching today. I tell you, if, you, <laughs> <laughs> if you're Shelby, don't want to give in yep. here. You got first base open, so nothing down the middle. Just continuing to make your good pitches here. And a good pitch was fouled back by Reese. Just missed that car. That lady's sitting back there in that car, and I don't know. You would think after two almost hit her, she would say, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to move. There's enough parking elsewhere. I think I can move this. You thing. know, it, as much as I really like the banner around the, uh, around the wall, you know, out in center field, out in the outfield, it took away the viewing area of the uh, people that used to park out yeah, there to get point. away from, from that. So. As Reese going to slap that one foul, going to be out of play. And the count remains full with two outs on Charlie Reese at the plate. Good battle between Gossett and Reese here. 
Yeah, neither one giving in. She's got quick hands, too. Again, she really got around that one quick, followed it over the left field uh, line fence there, and quick hands. The payoff pitch. Low and inside, and that's going to put Charlie Reese down at first base. Right now, Jenna Malk still standing on second, so a pair on for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. With two outs here in the bottom of the first, Susie Peltz, number 10, the number five batter, also the first baseman going to come to the plate. And Susie, a junior, bats 273, two doubles, four RBIs, and a pair of runs on the year. She will bat from the left-hand batter's box. And will take a ball on the outside part of the plate. Again, first walk for uh, Shelby there, uh, last batter. But, again, no big deal. You got yep. had first base open. So yep. last thing you want to do is uh, give a groove one to Charlie Reese and <laughs> watch yeah. that thing go. Yeah, yeah, because she can spray it around. We s said that earlier and just missing the outside part of the plate there was Gossett. So the 2-0 pitch from Gossett to Peltz with two down in the bottom of the first. Outside ball number three. Probably don't want to load him here. You've got Maddie Bantam, the catcher, coming up. Bantam, a sophomore, bats 172, so maybe that's what Dusty Braun's looking at, saying, hey, look, let, let's, not, let's not mess around here with Peltz. Let's try to get the Bantam and make, him, make her beat us. And then uh, Gossett turns around and fires a high <laughs> strike. So maybe... Maybe he wasn't thinking that. I don't know. Well, again, Shelby's been right around that entire plate. Just can't quite find it there. And Foul back now. Runs are. the count full. And it almost hit your ride back there. I just say. Real close. There, there's no chance. There's, it came close, didn't real, it? Real close. <laughs> real close. The only safe parts uh. are probably uh, over at the soccer field. <laughs> <laughs> and that's way over there. <laughs> I left the sunroof open. Yeah, <laughs> you might have caught a it. Souvenir ball there. Gossett's payoff pitch slapped down the third baseline foul by Susie Peltz. Again, great defensive swing there. Live again, great pitch right on the outside corner there. Nice defensive swing. Live, uh, live to play another pitch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and if you're Gossett, you continue to battle, and uh, she battle back full here. So you know, maybe she pulls the string here. Something maybe off speed to try and fool her. The payoff pitch. Nope. Gives it straight right gas, hit. and she slapped it into right or left field, rather. The throw into home slide is in. Jenna Malk scores. And the stand up double for Susie Peltz plates Jenna Malk and gives the Lady Tornadoes the lead with two down here in the bottom of the first inning. Really good piece of hitting there. Really good, solid hit. Good fielding all the way around, though. But again, what a crucial time to get that hit and. Uh, Score uh, Jenna Malk from second base. So Charlie Reese now at third base with Peltz at second. And still two down. Maddie Bantam at the plate. The catcher again, a sophomore, bats 172 with three runs and one RBI looking to get RBI number two. And heck, if she finds a hole here, can pick up a pair of RBIs. Yeah, that'd be huge uh, for Dover right now yeah. and bottom of that first inning, get that lead right away and see if you can capitalize on this. Gossett trying to get out of trouble. She gets one right down the dish and in on the hands. Fly ball to center field to Musser is recorded. So Maddie Bantam flies to center to end the first inning. Lady Tornadoes get a run. They lead one nothing back on Big Z Sports and Clax Communications right after this. When you're traveling to the game, there's a great way to see your directional map on a new radio from Cartoons in New Philly. Just plug in your phone, and all your maps and apps and Bluetooth devices are right on your radio. Cartoons carries a wide selection of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto radios from all of the name brands. From 7-inch screen radios to 10-inch screen radios, Cartoons has you covered. Stop in and see them on display and let Cartoons give you a demonstration. Cartoons, 517 West High Avenue in New Philly. Be there. Reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to $400? Thad here for TMK Valley Propane. The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. 
Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. Welcome back to Dover High School, their field anyway, Dover <laughs> City Park, <laughs> as the Lady Braves coming to the plate against Jenna Malk, as they trail one to nothing here as we move to inning number two, and do up the designated player, Brooklyn Sanders, number 25, and uh, you know, Brooklyn has had a pretty good season. She's only batting 333, uh, but uh, the senior steps in when she needs to to uh, you know get some key at bats. I like that. We, we only batting 333. You know how many major leaguers would uh, die I, to be <laughs> I get it. Three of their season. It's funny how it. we say that right now. I get it 100%. There's just so much good uh, softball talent in this area right now. Oh, I and, agree. Uh, again, really really enjoyable being out here today. Absolutely. It's I mean, you couldn't ask for a better day. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous compared to the weather that we've had. Oh. Even if you uh, – and look, we've got a big crowd here. Not And a nice strike there by Malk to even the count at ones against Brooklyn Sanders. But, uh, you know, it, both – even though these are kind of rivals, Indian Valley and Dover, there's a lot of people around this ballpark here this afternoon. And they should be because it's just a beautiful day to be out and support local high school sports. What and Sanders going to rip it up the middle. For the first hit of the ball game, Brooklyn Sanders with a leadoff single here in the second inning. Yeah, you got a you got a lot of people here today. Beautiful park facility here at uh, yeah, Dover do right now, job. and yep. uh, again, very. Uh, whenever you see kids playing, it kind of always brings the walkers and everybody here. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And a foul ball there from Ashley Baker, the second baseman. Baker, the senior, batting 375 on the air. One of these senior leaders that Dusty Braun talked about in our Cush Financial Group interviews in the dugout. And uh, she just does a great job. I mean, she's she's been solid uh, her whole career here for the Braves. Showed bunt. Ball was in the dirt or on the turf, as you would say here. <laughs> Normally it would be in the dirt, but that's not allowed, I don't think. In the brown part of the field. How's that? <laughs> in the brown part of the, brown field. part of the field. It didn't quite make it to the plate. <laughs> Just a bit short. The 1-1 one, one pitch from Jenna Malk is low. And again, moving on the play with Sanders down there at first base. Look, I don't care if you're a threat to steal or not. Anytime you can jump off base and make that catcher work and pop up like you're going to go, you make that catcher tired, especially when it's hot out like this. And hit her. I think Jenna Malk hit her. No, nope. ticked it. No, nope. went to oh. bunt, and I think just uh, just got a just a little piece. Was of it, it on the handle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's why then. All right. Wow, Ashley Baker. Yeah, to your point, Chris. Again, you got the whole infield shifting too. You got second going over to cover first, and you, you never know. That just opens up the middle of that field there, and if you can slap yeah. that through there, it just <laughs> opens up a little bit more, and you never know what happens. Right. Two-two count on Ashley Baker. The senior, Jenna Malk, the sophomore, on the mound for Dover. Brooklyn Sanders at first, and the ball outside, full count now. Just what Dusty Braun wanted. We'll see what happens here with Ashley Baker. As she tries to get the Lady Braves back into this, they trail one to nothing. And the payoff pitch, strike three from Jenna Malk. Her second strikeout. Good at bat by Ashley Baker. Yeah, really good battle there, and... And both pitchers just not just giving an inch right now. And Jenna Malka just a little bit better on that pitch, uh, able to get the uh, third strike. Celeste Rommel, number 13, the third baseman, steps in now. She is a senior, 375 average for the tall Celeste Rommel. And she'll take strike number one right down the pipe from Jenna Malk. Yeah, it's always funny when we do these games year after year, you know, we're like, how many years has that kid been in high school? Yeah, you I know. know? And, and you got some real athletes that start as freshmen and yeah. just go up the ranks. And by their senior year, they seem like they've been there forever. <laughs> I know. Sometimes, oh, ooh, that, that was, was a good a, one. Yeah, that <laughs> was almost a back window right there. <laughs> Celeste is going to have to pay for that out of her own, her own allowance <laughs> if she blows that window out over there. 
I was uh, trying to say it loud enough she could hear me, but as long as it's not your uh, <laughs> your parents or your car, you're okay. Yeah, I mean, that's what they got yeah, insurance for, right? right? Rummel's going to bounce that one to the third baseman. They will call it foul. Olivia McHugh had it. I think she knew that it was foul, but uh, thought about the throw over anyway. <laughs> yeah, when when you're when you get the ball, it's like, all right, let me. Oh man, come yeah, on up. <laughs> hey, you sure that wasn't fair? Right, you sure? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Again, Olivia, nice job fielding the ball there. Great position, ready to throw it, and umpire behind the plate calls it just foul. So Rummel will step back in the 0-2 pitch from Jenna Malk. To Celeste Rummel, and that's strike number three. Third strikeout for Jenna Malk. And Bella Weaver now steps to the plate. And uh, if you're in the Valley, you don't want to strand Brooklyn Sanders at first base after that nice opening single to lead things off. As Malk will give it. This one's got a shot. Into ride, and that is a ride, and it does get down. Bella Weaver, the catcher, going to plate. The first run of the ball game, and she's going to get into third with a triple. What a hit by Bella Weaver. Gave it a ride, and she's in with a triple. The sophomore bats 307 on the year, and uh, what a beautiful piece of hitting, Stumpy. I tell you what, we were watching that thing. That, that thing went high, too. We're like, man, this one's got a shot here and a great try by left field Ow. there. Uh, Kara Lint tried to get that ball, but... Uh, Dropped in there, a great hustle to third base. Yeah, and, and it didn't seem like the, the wind was catching at all. I don't think the sun bothered her at all, but maybe a little bit of spin on the ball as it left the bat. I don't know. But it looked like Lint did have a little bit of problem with it, but I'll tell you what, Weaver just gave it a ride, and it was almost the first home run of the year for her. And now stepping to the plate, Sadie Dryden, the left fielder. As Sadie will step in, the senior batting 384 on the year. And uh, looking to get another RBI, and she's got Bella standing down there at third base. They didn't uh, strand Sanders at first, and that was good. <laughs> this game nodded at one now. And, and that's a big run again with Dover taking that lead in the bottom of the first and just being able to get right back the next half of the inning and get that run back. Yep. That's a big uh, mental step to get over, and uh, let's see if we can get her in third base here. Yeah, absolutely. Sadie Dryden, the left fielder, will take ball number one on the outside part of the plate. Counts one and one here in the second inning. Two down. And uh, you just don't see Jenna Malk give up many runs uh, with the 085 ERA. As her second pitch, a strike number two right down Broadway. Dryden a little bit late there. And uh, look, Malk, if, if you show any, any little weakness, she's going to exploit it on the mound. Well, she's got a little bit of an attitude right now giving yeah. up that triple right now. And you can see it with these past few pitches. Ball in the dirt or a little low, real close to the dirt. Tried, oh, and had tried a delayed steal, and she's hammered at the plate. So out number three is going to be the pinch runner for Bella Weaver. That was Haley Kern. We stay tied at one. Lady Tornado's coming to the plate in the bottom of the second after this on Big Z Sports. Shit, my bad. I didn't see current. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime. Built on trust since 1911. Hi, this is Jan McIntyre. The past 30 years, the residents in and around the Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff of McIntyre Realty for buying and selling their residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all of those communities, there is nothing better than high school sports. For myself and all the agents and staff at McIntyre Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season. And make the call to McIntyre Realty, 330-364-SOLD. Or find us online at McIntyreRealty.net. Welcome back to Dover City Park. Again, I apologize for my language there. I thought we were off the air. That's my fault, so I apologize. But uh, I didn't catch the pinch runner. That got thrown out at home to end the second inning for the Braves. Now we move to the Dover half of the second inning. And Sarah Clark, the second baseman, will lead things off. 
Ooh. and Clark for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. A junior bats 179, a double, an RBI, and four runs scored as she will face Shelby Gossett, who has a walk and a K through one inning. Can expect Shelby to bring that heat on that first pitch. She pulled mm -hmm. that string beautifully on that first pitch and again uh, ends up uh, with the two strikes against Sarah. So tied at one, bottom of the second inning. Shelby Gossett fires to the plate. Back to the screen is Sarah Clark. Again, good defensive swing right there. That's what you need. Get a little, get a little aluminum. Yeah, on that ball. Yeah, graphite. Graphite? Is that what well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> not wood. I'll tell you that. Right, it's not wood. No, it's not. And uh, try to uh, a safety swing there. And Gossett going to get strike three for her second strikeout. She tried to just get a piece of that one and wasn't able to connect. So Sarah Clark goes down on strikes. Brings up Kara Lint, the pitcher of record yesterday. Pitched a beauty, a one-hit shutout in the win over Carrollton 6-0 last night. And Lint will step in now in the batter's box playing left field. And Lint, the junior, with a 179 average. Tell you what, Shelby's come I'm out sorry, this sophomore. inning. She's been throwing uh, throwing a lot of strikes here, doing mm -hmm. a great job here, and uh, got honed in there and doing a nice job the bottom of half of the second inning. Yeah, battling back. Carolina sophomore, by the way. My bad. Lent will take the swing at it and miss. Two strikes now on Carolyn. I tell you, if you're Coach Hannah Duff, you're excited about the young talent you have on oh, here. Yeah. Yet you got some good, high-quality seniors here to kind of lead that way, kind of keep everybody calm there. So she's got a nice team here and a lot to look forward to in the future. And strike three and a third strikeout for Shelby Gossett, who retires Kara Lint. And back-to-back -back strikeouts for Gossett. And now she's going to try and get Madeline Fockler, the right fielder, who steps in in the number nine hole with two down. It's that big batter right here for Shelby Gossett for Indian Valley right now. One to shut down the nine hole batter right here instead of putting her on base and starting with the top of the lineup. Yeah, no doubt about it. Madeline Fockler, a junior, bats 176, an RBI five runs on the year. Gossett will fire the 0-1. And Fockler going to hit it to the gap. And not going to be able to get there is Musser. So Musser will let that one drop between Musser and Alice House. And the first hit of the game for Madeline Faulkner. Nice uh, nice piece of hitting right there to bring up the top of the order. And that's what you want. You get on base with the power coming up at the uh, at the top of the order for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. Yeah, we just said how big of a batter that was for Shelby. Tried not to get there. And again, Madeline Faulkner turns right around, proves us wrong, puts a nice ball into right center field, gets on first base. And uh, here we go for Jenna Mulk. Jenna Mulk hit by a pitch and scored in the first inning. She will take the first pitch high. Gossett trying to battle back here and get Malk to retire the Lady Tornadoes here in the second inning. Two down, game tied at one. The 1-0 pitch. Strike number one. Good high <laughs> heat there from Gossett. If Jenna got a hold of that ball, yeah. the, the houses would have been in trouble would, there yeah. in left field. <laughs> I agree with you. A good rise ball there out of Gossett. That ball was just, it just continually <laughs> stayed on that incline. She was she was swinging for the fences there. And another rise there, just a little high. Runs the count to two and one. I tell you, one of the really neat things about softball games, just the mental side between the pitcher and the batter and just trying to stay ahead of each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's huge mental battle. Ball was low there. Two and two the count on the sophomore Jenna Malk. Gossett fires and strike number three. Four strikeout 
for Shelby Gossett. Retires the side. We're tied at one. We move to the third right after this on Big Z Sports. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. If you're planning a major concrete project, you need the help of Stocker Concrete Company. From precast concrete products to ready mix concrete, sand, gravel, limestone, and concrete block, the professionals at Stocker Concrete can help you get started and keep you on the path to completion using the best materials you can find. Stocker Concrete is the concrete material provider you can count on. See them at 7574 Route 36, Janaden Hutton, or call 740-254-4626. Welcome back to Tober City Park. We are not an at one. Listen, Stumpy, we knew this was going to be a good one, and uh, the first two innings have led that to be the case. Uh, I think we're, we were right on that one. Yeah, we got a, a high-quality game here, and like I said, you got a lot of, we talked about earlier, a lot of people here buzzing about this right now. And Sadie Dryden got new life after she had two strikes on her, but the failed steal attempt, the failed steal attempt uh, on the delayed steal put Sadie Dryden back at the plate. <laughs> Uh, and did we not just have a conversation about this earlier? We, we did. We did. And, uh, yeah, that's that's all I'm going to say about it. Right. That's, <laughs> right. Now See, I know. Now we now, know. Now I know. As coming to the plate, Nadia Alice House, the right fielder, will be the bottom of the lineup. Natalie Musser waiting on deck, the leadoff batter, with one out here in the top of the third. Jenna Malk. Will fire the 0-1 in the dirt. And did she offer? They're nope. going to say no. So, nope. you know, it's always it's always tough whenever, you know, when you're trying to bunt attempt or you're trying to slap attempt and, uh, you know, the bat crosses the plate. Then it goes to did it break the shoulder, those sort of break the wrist, those sort of things. Ball is in the dirt. 2-1 and one now to Alice House. But, uh, you know. It's just a little bit different game than what baseball is, right? Absolutely. And, and speaking of that, that's why pitchers like Jenna Malk and Shelby Gossett can pitch in back-to-back -back games, uh, even double headers, because they get a ball low there. It's 3-1. and one. But uh, there was a little, uh, I'll say, disagreement on the uh, Big Z Sports Facebook page. And I understand that you, you don't want to pitch girls on back-to-back -back games if you if you can help it. The strike number two on the outside runs the count full for Jenna Malk. Um, but if you only have one pitcher, it is not dangerous to the kid to pitch multiple games because they do it in college, high school, pros, whatever. Is Alice House going to slap that right over to Clark, and Clark's going to fire to Pelts to retire Alice House for out number two. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of baseball and softball are different games. You can't do that in baseball. There's a pitch count. There's inning limits. There's not in high school base or softball. Well, again, just different mechanics right now. And, and I think, you know, a lot of people are hypersensitive to it because we've seen so many pitchers, especially this season, Major League Baseball, right. just go down this year. Right. And, uh, again, th there's not the, the the strain on those ligaments, yeah. right? There, yeah. There's just not. As Malk will fire strike number one to even the count on the leadoff batter, Natalie Musser. And they for think, one. Like I said, you got some good quality coaches, too, who are constantly talking yes. to these kids, too. Yes. And, uh, again, you got some kids who, oh, wow. <laughs> Dusty, Dusty almost <laughs> took one off the chin right there. Uh, That's all right. He, he's, he, he's laughing it off. He said, "Do it again. <laughs> just hit it straight." He didn't. Uh, he didn't. He didn't get a chance to move even. That, that ball oh, was. <laughs> he was a little light on his feet there. I was a little surprised. <laughs> Musser, the, the one-two pitch, <sighs> will slap it back to Malt. Clar will pick it up. She'll fire to first safe. and safe. Good piece of running by Natalie Musser, who will get. We'll give her credit with the infield single there. 
Absolutely. Again, the good defensive choked up on the bat. Just almost, almost a little slap bat just to put the ball across the strike zone. And with her uh, quick wheels, got down to first right away. And a lesson for Clark and for kids everywhere. Not that she didn't charge the ball, but you need to charge yep. the ball and get there in a hurry, uh, especially on this turf. Uh, it will eat you up in a hurry as Laney Avil fouls the ball back for strike number one. And yeah, back to that thing though, we we're talking about mechanics, right? When you're when you're firing a ball underhand, it is different than than putting that torque on your elbow. Yep, uh, firing overhand, it's just a different mechanics, and that allows girls to pitch uh, multiple games in a row. As uh, Abil going to crank that one to right field, as Fockler is going to make the catch and retire the side. So after uh, a couple deep fly balls there, the Indian Valley Braves retired with no runs. We move to the bottom of the third, still tied at one between Indian Valley and Dover. Back after this on Big Z Sports and Claxon Communications. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes good luck this season. Welcome back to Dover City Park. Game tied at one. Chris Kale, Aaron Stump here with you. And again, we want to thank Wayne Dorr for our instant replays. As Casey over there working his magic and getting those Wayne Dorr instant replays in as we move to the bottom of the third. Two, three, four hitters for the Lady Crimson Tornadoes, and they will take strike number one from Shelby Gossett. Gossett working on four strikeouts and a walk. And with the one run here in the third, she's pitched a really good game. Both pitchers pitching well, like yeah, we she, thought they would. She threw a lot of pitches that first inning and gave up one run, but like we talked about. Oh, and a off-speed pitch is retired. Good throw from Abil over to first baseman Gabby Mead to retire Olivia McHugh. So did she and, catch uh, that? It was real close. <laughs> it was really wasn't. close. That's no. why I hesitated. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? I was like, um. But uh, we Goss both did. We're like, yeah, I thought she caught it. Let's see. I yeah, did. We're like, yeah, I thought she caught it. Let's see. Yeah, she made the play at first. We're good. <laughs> I think the official was like, just throw it to first. Right, the first. right, right, right. <laughs> Gossett went, uh, went uh, off speed there and almost hitting another car. <laughs> so McHugh now 0 for 1 with that ground out to the shortstop. And uh, she sack bunted in her first at bat. Get on the Abiel with a great play there. Yeah. Little uh, shift to her right. Uh, great base to throw that ball to first base. And she might have gotten her out twice. I'm not sure. Oh, drilled that one. Kohler's going to have to pay for that one. <laughs> she, I, see, I said that one. She looked back and smiled. <laughs> Lenny Kohler is over one with a strikeout against Shelby Gossett, and she also has a dented bumper on a car in the parking lot. <laughs> the 0-2 the pitch with one down. Off speed, Kohler slaps it up the middle. Nice piece of hitting there by Laney Kohler, the senior, as she gets her first hit of the game with one down. Shelby Gossett trying to pull the string on that one, and Laney able to keep her uh, bat back, swing all the way through, and right back up the middle. So a little one-out lightning here for the Lady Tornadoes, Charlie Reese, the cleanup batter. She walked in her first at bat. As they foul that one back to the screen, she walked and scored. Yeah, I'm not sure how many pitches Shelby Gossett threw the first inning. She threw a bunch, but, man, that second inning she hadn't, didn't throw yeah. many. She hasn't thrown many this inning, and uh, 
She is being very efficient on that mound right now. Gossett high there. Kohler gets a little bit of a lead over there after the pitch was fired but decides not to go. Good job and a good stop by Bella Weaver. Listen, when you're a tall catcher, <laughs> those high ones, <laughs> they can handle them, right? <laughs> you get some of those kids that are short and it doesn't work out too well. Is slapped right back to Gossett. She fires to Meade for out number two. So Charlie Reese, after she walked and scored in the first inning, will be retired with a ground out here. Tell you, good play by Shelby Gossett there right now. Again, not even, uh, you know, looking at the girl at second, just get the out at yep. first and uh, two outs here. And Again, you've been pitching really well. Trust your stuff. Two down, Kohler at second, and the lone RBI off of the double, off of the bat, of number 10 is at the plate right now in Susie Peltz. Again, Bella Weaver doing a nice job behind the plate there for Indian Valley, stopping that one and uh, keeping Laney Kohler at second base. Two and oh to Peltz. Gossett trying to get out of this with Stranding Kohler down at second base. And Pelt's going to slap that one towards the Indian Valley dugout for strike number one. Two and one, the count. Shelby Gossett working on four strikeouts. The lone walk, the lone run here through two and two-thirds. Getting quick game to this point, man. I told you. We started a few minutes early. It's been a quick game. <laughs> told you. <laughs> strike number two on the bottom part of the plate as she got – Pelts to swing, and now the count even at twos. Better call my wife. I still might be home for dinner. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the 2-2 two -two pitch from Shelby Gossett is hit up the third baseline. A good play wow. by the third baseman, Celeste Rommel, and she'll fire it over and retire the side. One hit, no runs, no errors. We're still tied at one. We move to the top of the fourth. Back after this on Big Z Sports and Claxon Communications. Are you ready to give your home a new look? Look no further than Wayne Door, your one-stop shop for all your residential needs. Garage doors, entry doors, windows, and patio doors. Wayne Door has everything you need to upgrade your curb appeal. With 24-7 emergency service, you can trust their technicians to be there when you need them most. Stop by the Dover showroom on State Route 39 or visit WayneDoor.com and let the experts help transform your house into the home of your dreams. Wayne Door, more than just garage doors, from the people you can trust. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Gabby Mead steps to the plate here in the top of the fourth inning. Chris Cal, Aaron Stump here with you for Big Z Sports. And strike number one, or actually no, ball number one, a little bit low. Right after this next pitch, we will take a Wayne Door instant replay of that third out and the great play by Celeste Rummel down there at third. As the ball goes back to the screen, let's check out that instant replay now from Wayne Door and a beautiful scoop and fire over to first by Celeste Rummel to retire the Dover Tornadoes and Strand Laney Kohler at second base. Yeah, she did a great job, uh, again, getting in front of that ball and a great throw right uh, to first base and for the third out of the inning. Malk wants nothing to do with Gabby Mead here, and I don't blame her. Mead flied out the center, a deep fly to center. She is 0-for-1 in her first at bat, but 3-0 uh, and 0 right now, Jenna Malk to Mead, and she does get the strike on the outside part of the plate. Mead's so tall that uh, she can throw it a little bit higher, and she's still going to get the high <laughs> high strike call. That's the downside about being a tall batter. The 3-1, yeah. Malk going to run it full now. Oh, that was that was right on the That's window. The base of the window. <laughs> yep. Gabby Mead going to have to pay for that one. Uh, They'll call her insurance company, I'm sure. Uh, 
<laughs> so oh. Gabby, the first baseman, will drive one to center field. Back on the track and to the wall goes Charlie Reese to retire. Gabby Mead, and uh, that's why Jenna Malk didn't want nothing to do with her because I told you she can hit the cover off the ball. She put another charge into it, and that's uh, her second time flying out yep. to center field there again. Two long outs uh, for her the, this game so far. The DP Brooklyn Sanders, number 25, steps in. She's got a single and a run scored back in the first inning that nodded this game at one. Off of Bella Weaver's RBI triple. She led off. Actually, that was back in the second. I take that back. Yep. She led off the second, right? Yep, led off the second. Led off the second with a single and scored on the two-out triple by Bella Weaver. Yeah, they had a heck of a battle. Went full count for a few pitches. Ooh, good pitch there. As uh, Sanders held up, but the pitch was good location right there. So the one-two pitch from Jenna Malk looking for strikeout number four. Low. It's another great pitch there by Jenna Malk again when you're ahead of the count. Yeah, you got a waste pitch there. Strikes. Yep. yep, and again, that's just below the strike zone. Good call by the uh, umpire there. The two-two pitch from Jenna Malk to Brooklyn Sanders. A little bit off speed, and it's hit right over the head of the third baseman and also Laney Kohler. So between McHugh and Kohler, and two for two is Brooklyn Sanders on the afternoon with a pair of singles. Yeah, good. Nothing uh, hard. It doesn't matter. Uh, popped it right over the infield right yep. there, and you're on first base. That's all That's all that counts. <laughs> Don't matter how hard you hit it as long as you get the first before the throw or the catch. Amen. Strike. To Ashley Baker, the second baseman. She's 0 for 1, struck out back in the second inning. Jenna Malk dealing the 0 1 pitch with one out, strike number two. So Baker has stood and looked at the first two. Got to get that bat off the shoulder here and protect, or you are going to be strikeout victim number four to one Jenna Malk. Off speed, strike three. Good pitch by Jenna Malk through three right by Ashley Baker and uh I'm not sure Ashley just agreed frozen. With that. Yeah. she didn't but she, she was frozen didn't know for sure there. so Baker now 0 for 2 with two strikeouts and Celeste Rummel who struck out back in the second she is at the plate now and takes ball one high you know, again, it's always kind of fun watching Jenna Malt pitch from the standpoint. You know, you got another single by Brooklyn Saunders there. And it's yeah. almost like she gets upset, and there's another yeah. gear in there for her. Strike two, or strike one, rather, on Rummel. So the 1-1 one, one with two down here in the top of the fourth. And you've got Bella Weaver, the catcher, with the RBI triple off of her bat back in the second, standing in the on-deck circle. And Rummel's going to take strike two swinging. So okay. we'll see what happens here. Great pitch there by Jenna. And ended up having Celeste roar away in front of that ball. With a nice changeup. Malk fires right past Celeste Rummel for strikeout number five. That retires the side. They strand Brooklyn Sanders over at first base. Still tied at one. Moving to the bottom of the fourth on Big Z Sports and Claxon Communications. Find your path to success at Buckeye Career Center. Buckeye students earned over 3,000 industry-recognized credentials this past school year, and over 130 students participated in our school-to-work program or an internship at a local business. Let us help you get a jump start on your future in a career of landscaping and turf management, pharmacy technician, HVACR, CAD development and design, or any of our over 30 programs. Enroll today for next school year by visiting BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. When you think pizza, think of Michi's Pizza with locations in West Lafayette and Janet and Hutton to serve you. Amici's Pizza offers your favorite traditional pizzas as well as specialty pizzas, subs, wings, and salads. Everything from the dough to the sauce is made fresh daily. Right now at Amici's, with the purchase of a large or an extra large pizza at regular price, receive a free medium cheesy bread. Try one today in West Lafayette or Janet and Hutton. Big city taste for a small city price. 
Learn more. Find Amici's on Facebook. Chris Kale, Aaron Stump here with you, bottom of the fourth inning. I'm glad that Blue came over to check to make sure my microphone was <laughs> off while we were talking there. As a uh, nice hit by Bantam, and it's going to go to the wall. Matty Bantam lead, led off with a stand-up double on the first pitch from Shelby Gossett. That didn't take long, did it? No, no it did not. <laughs> Matty Bantam, the catcher. I was going to say she was 0 for 1 with a fly out the center, and now she's standing on second with a leadoff double. 15 courtesy runner here. Avery Contini going to pinch run. So Contini over at second base, the pinch runner for the catcher, Bantam, who doubles. Tell you, that's a really hard hit there. You saw uh, Sadie Dryden actually take a couple steps in. Thought it was going to fall in front of her, and that ball yeah. was hit so hard. <laughs> that's a tough one, not hit very high, and those are tough to judge. And all the way to the fence for a, uh, a double for Maddie. So Gossett trying to get out of this one now. She fired a ball and now gets a strike on the outside part of the plate to even the count at ones on Sarah Clark, who is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Clark, the second baseman. And ball outside from Gossett. Two and one the count with Contini down at second base. Avery Contini, just a junior. <clears throat> getting a little base running time. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Clark will bunt. A little high bunt. Fielded by Rummel. And she will fire to first. And not in time. I think we're going to have to give Celeste an error there, you think? Yeah, I don't, you know what? It, it was your your call on that one. I called yeah. the first one. You call yeah. this one. I'm, give, I'm giving her a single on okay. that one. We're, we're going to give it to All her. All right, we'll give Clara the single. Rummel just a, a little, I mean, it was a hot shot and just had the little bobble and then fired over, but that little bobble probably was the difference in uh, you know just the split second maybe a about a step or two uh, late was the throw over to Gabby Mead so good base running by Clark Clark's fast like her mom not like her dad <laughs> but her mom <laughs> thankfully for her right thankfully for her well, it's one of those things. That when you get on this turf, too, one of the things is when those balls spin as much as they do, they are hard to field. Yeah, they are. Um, and, again, it's it's kind of one of those things. To your point earlier in the game, you've got to charge that ball hard because if you let that ball play you, you're in big trouble. Yeah, absolutely. As we had the uh, mound visit there by Dusty Braun out to talk to his pitcher, Shelby Gossett. <clears throat> again, nothing wrong with uh, – you know, going out and talking to your junior and settling her down a little bit, making sure everybody understands the signs here. As runners at the corners, you know that Clara's going to end up on second base after this first pitch. She does. They cut it off nice, and now they've got Contini and really good base running by Contini as she slides underneath the tag of Weaver. And I, I thought they had her there. Well, they had uh, they had her coming around the base there. She tripped, and Celeste had the ball. For whatever reason, she almost double-pumped it. And yeah. that, that double pump ended up costing them the run. Yeah, definitely, uh, you know, Abil made the nice, you know, she cut that one off to yep. throw to second. I mean, that's kind of textbook what you do on those situations to make sure you keep the runner at third. Yep, and Manny Bantam ended up slipping when she tried to get back yep. at third, and they had her. And uh, Well, it was actually Contini, pinch running. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. No, yep. But yep. you're right, you're right. You're right. Yep. And, uh, yep, gives uh, gives Dover uh, Crimson Tornadoes another run. So 2-1 to one now as Kara Lint in. She struck out in her first at bat, the number eight hitter, playing left field. Like we said earlier, pitched a gem last night against Carrollton. What a what a luxury if you're Dover to have a, so, a pair of sophomore pitchers that are as good as these two are. Is Lentz going to strike out for the second time? And that is the fifth strikeout for Shelby Gossett. 
Again, only the first out for the uh, Crimson Tornadoes here. Yeah, and Clar standing down at second. Madeline Faulkner at the plate. The right fielder, one for one with a single. Two to one. Tornadoes in front. Bottom of the fourth, one out. Gossett, fire strike number one. And if you're Coach Hannah Duff, you really want that third run going across the plate right now just to give you a little bit of padding there uh, because we know Indian Valley come back any inning right now, put a couple together, and get right back on the board. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how how uh, how aggressive the first-year coach wants to be here. Uh, you've got speed at second base. You're up a run. You've only got one out here, and you've got the top of the order coming up, though. That's the yep. kind of the key point, right? I don't think you want to mess around with the top coming up. Just inside, a big lead away was Contini from second base. I'm sorry, Clark from second base. As Fockler are going to take ball number two. So two and one, the count from Gossett to Madeline Fockler with Clark at second. High heat, good pitch by Shelby Gossett. You know, you get a, you know, you heard Coach Jim Morris down there on first base, a big one here. This is a big pitch. Big pitch, big at bat. Gossett trying to rear back and throw one by. Madeline Fockler and does. Six strikeout for Shelby Gossett, and she got a strikeout, a pair of strikeouts when she really needed it. They got Madeline Fockler going down there on strikes out there. The second inning actually came through with that single in there and uh, unable to do it this time. Yep. So bringing up Jenna Malk, actually. Oh, they ended up walking her. Oh, they did put yep. Malk on. So Malk was intentionally walked. Probably not a bad idea, but then you bring up McHugh, who, uh, you know, the freshman is still batting 435 on the year. <laughs> Although she is 0 for 1, she had the sack bunt, she grounded out to shortstop. So huge at bat here in this ball game in the bottom of the fourth. Gossett will fire the first pitch, strike. A nice rise ball there to Olivia McHugh, the third baseman. I said big props to Shelby Gossett right yeah. now. Again, uh, get, gives up a run early in their sitting, uh, one out, and uh, ends up being on second base and two strikeouts in a row. Two great, huge great strikeouts. Job. Gossett fires the 0-1, and wow, really had McHugh tied up there. McHugh trying to get a piece of it, and... Uh, those are so hard to lay off. It that is. Ball, I get it. I ball get it. Starts down by the knees and just keeps rising and rising and uh, get great pitch there. Huge pitch right here for Gossett. The 0 2 is fouled back behind the plate. Going to catch nobody. You know what? That that red truck that just a great job of putting the brakes on. Just pump those brakes a little I bit. Let it fly what, right yep. by. Right? Tell you what, that, that truck would have kept going. That's what I did playing basketball today. I got a, <laughs> you got out on a fast break. They threw it to me and I just pumped the brakes and let, <laughs> let the defender fly right on by and I laid it in. I did, seriously. Uh, Another foul back to the screen there. Actually, maybe a little bit of contact with a graze car. that would. <laughs> Count remains 0-2. You know, we talked about the crowd here earlier. What's about, really about six o'clock yeah. uh, after work? Crowds coming in. Yeah. I tell you what, there's a lot of people here watching this good game right now. Beautiful day for softball here in Dover, Ohio. The 0-2 pitch, strike three, big strikeout by Shelby Gossett, her seventh on the afternoon to keep this game at one run deficit we move to the top of the fifth inning the indian valley braves come into the plate they trail by one two to one back after this on big z sports Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what you need, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Wendy's new breakfast two for three dollar biggie bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best: sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. 
Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee. Or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for $3 biggie bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. Welcome back to Dover City Park. Chris Kale, Aaron Stump here with you. And uh, we are at a softball game, but a Bon Jovi concert broke out <laughs> between innings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always funny, you know, when, when we, I love going to these different complexes and hearing the music that they play, and uh, a lot of the times we can't play the music the kids listen to a lot. Kohler is going to make a nice, nice throw over to retire Bella Weaver. Weaver had the RBI triple and uh, in her last plate appearance, and uh, Kern came in and ran for her, Kearns did, and, uh, you know, was out at the plate. But uh, beautiful throw by Kohler, the shortstop, to retire for the out number one. Yeah, that's a nice arm on her right there. That was going to end up being a close play, and she ended up firing it over there. Nice, uh, nice, good throw, and goes for the first out in the fifth inning already. Yeah, fifth inning. Sadie Dryden at the plate, 0 for 1. She grounded out to the pitcher. Good thing catchers are tough. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, that's yeah. Just you heard that one. Yeah, <laughs> Bantam took that one, and uh, you know she shook it off, grounded down to third, and foul ball. Again, that's the <laughs> second time McHugh's <laughs> wanted to make the throw. <laughs> that's what I'm laughing at. Said poor Olivia sitting down there yeah. in the hot corner down there. Yeah. The great. She place. just wants to make a throw. She gets ready to throw it. The the umpires yell foul. Right. right. I mean it's foul. It's it's right. a good call. Just if you're Olivia, like come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so the one-two pitch from Malk, strike three. As Jenna Malk will get her sixth strikeout of the evening as Dryden drops to 0 and 2. Nadia Alice House, bottom of the order, the right fielder. She is 0 for 1, grounded out to the second baseman, Sarah Clark, the last time at the plate. And Jenna Malk fires strike number one. No rise ball, no curve ball, straight gas right there out of Jenna Malk. And and again, <laughs> strike number two. <laughs> Nothing but heat right now. Well. Give him the heater, Ricky. <laughs> right? Forget the curve ball. Yep. Don't need it. Another fastball just missed high. Again, ball number one. Talked about just that mental game, and again, great pitch by Jenna there, and uh, Nadia went for the the second pitch, get the second strike, threw it at her again. She was able to hold off. Now we're going two two. Even count at twos here. Jenna Malk against Nadia Alice House. Right fielder is zero for one, and strike number three. Seven now for both pitchers. That retires the side. Lady Tornadoes coming to the plate, bottom of the fifth. They lead 2-1 to one. back after this on Big Z Sports. Live more comfortably this winter with the help of Unified Insulation Systems. Unified Insulation Systems is a full-service insulation and weatherization provider that can show you how to properly insulate your home or business. With good insulation from Unified Systems, you can prevent your gutters from freezing and get rid of your high-energy bills. Call Jeremiah Thomas today for your free quote at 330-773-7377 or visit unifiedinsulation.com. Call Unified Insulation Systems today, your most trusted name in insulation. At Kaufman Realty and Auctions, you've got options. Your property is unique, and our agents know how to sell it. Whether it's a traditional listing or live auction, we'll earn you top dollar. Our agents will utilize whichever method of sale works best. When buying or selling your next home, call on Kaufman. Welcome back to Dover City Park. Blue came over to check my microphone yeah. again real quick. <laughs> he, he'd been giving me stuff all day. Tell you what. It's all right. Just wait till he makes a bad call behind the plate. I'll give it back. He has yet to make <laughs> one, though. Yet he, to, we'll see I'll what be what honest with here. you. This crew has been really good here this afternoon. And, uh, <laughs> yes, we, we've, we've kept things moving. We're already in the bottom of the fifth inning. And uh, the pitchers have something to do with that as well. Uh, both pitchers, Jenna Malk 
and Shelby Gossett working on seven strikeouts apiece. Laney Kohler, 3-4-5 here, starting things off for the Lady Tornadoes in the bottom of the fifth. Kohler going to slap this one to left field in a good hey. play. Down there by the left fielder, Sadie Dryden, to retire Laney Kohler. She hit that one on a rope, and Kohler, or I'm sorry, um, Dryden tracked that one down and retired Kohler for out number one. Yeah, poor Sadie out there again. Another hard hit. And again, those are hard to see where they're going. And usually when you're in the uh, right uh, batter's box, those kind of tail uh, towards the left field line. And uh, she's battling the, the sun and all the elements there. And a uh, great catch there. Sounded good off the bat, but it wasn't good for Charlie Reese. She walked and scored in the first inning, or in the second inning, rather. And uh, 0 for 1 with a ground out to the pitcher. Now 0 for 2 with a ground out to the first baseman. Good play there by Gabby Mead. And it just sounded really fat off the bat there for well, you know, Charlie Reese. Every time, you, what, what, what do you think of every time you see that ball dribble down first? <laughs> Good old Bill Buckner. Yeah, uh, and it Ooh. happens. And a nice drive there. And it's going to be a double, an easy double by Susie Peltz. Peltz going to get into second. Stand up double as she ripped that one between Musser and Alice House. And... Now with two doubles on the afternoon and uh, moving that, uh, moving her day up for two for three on the afternoon is Susie Peltz. I tell you what, that's an impressive throw by Natalie Musser out there. Uh, you know, it was in the right center, and she got up and fired that ball yep. and a nice line hard drive right to shortstop to hold her to two bases. Musser a really good player and just a youngster as Maddie Bantam, the catcher, is one for two. She doubled the left field, and then Contini came in and scored and pinch ran for her. She flied out the center back in the second inning. Did Bantam, so the chance for another RBI out there as she fouls that one back. Oh, and a nice really catch. nice catch by Bella Weaver as she got up to the fence and retired the side on the foul out. Really good job by Bella Weaver as she gets the Retirement of Maddie Bannon, Bannum rather, and uh, that's going to do it for the fifth inning. We move to the sixth. Still two to one, Lady Tornadoes. Back after this on Big Z Sports. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PackDrilling.com. When you're traveling to the game, there's a great way to see your directional map on a new radio from Cartoons in New Philly. Just plug in your phone, and all your maps and apps and Bluetooth devices are right on your radio. Cartoons carries a wide selection of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto radios from all of the name brands. From 7-inch screen radios to 10-inch screen radios, Cartoons has you covered. Stop in and see them on display and let Cartoons give you a demonstration. Cartoons, 517 West High Avenue in New Philly. Be there. Welcome back. Dover and Indian Valley, Chris Kale and Aaron Stump. The Claxon Communications crew of Casey Claxon, Aiden Garbrandt, and Brody Stevens here with you. Dover Lady Tornadoes lead 2-1, to one, top of the order for Indian Valley. Natalie Musser is 1-2. for two. She had an infield single her last time at the plate. She grounded back to the pitcher in the first inning. Really, really good softball game here. And uh, we thought we had a Bon Jovi concert, and then Flo Rida came out <laughs> between innings there. So, I don't know. Bon Jovi must have opened up for Flo Rida. <laughs> Could have been. I don't know. <laughs> Very hospitable here at the yeah, uh, Dover I mean, Complex. Listen, Welcome to our house. It's it's all about diversity, right? right? We like diverse it's genres of music here. As Jenna Malk going to fire that one in, and it's bounced back, and Musser going to get a base hit. Natalie Musser, two for three now in the afternoon with a single right up the middle. Tell you what, you can't put it up the middle any better than that. Bounced it right over uh, Jenna Malk there, the pitcher, yep. and right over second base. And yep. Yep, Kohler and Clark couldn't run it down, and now Jenna Malk will face Laney Obiel. Obiel is 0 for 2. She flied out the right field and struck out. Like wow. Bless you over there. <laughs> 
like you talked earlier again uh, natalie's got a uh, some wheels over there and yeah trying to bunt her across getting her in scoring position well listen if you're going to get the mulk now's the time to do it with gabby mead sitting good on bunt. deck and a nice bunt good play there by the third baseman to retire the side was or retire the batter and olivia McHugh. she fired it over to first and uh you know good really good bunt by laney obiel uh, to bring up Gabby Mead with Natalie Musser standing down on second with only one out. Gabby Mead flew out to center both times at the plate. She is 0 for 2. Both of those just missed going yard. And a two-run bomb right here by Gabby Mead would put the Indian Valley Braves in front. The 1-0 pitch from Malk is in there for strike number one, even the count at ones. Just kind of floated that one in. Little, little off speed there from Malk. The problem Indian Valley has right now is uh, Dover's catcher, Matty Bantam, isn't exactly a uh, liability back there. She's right. got a nice arm right. back there. Yes, very much so. As Meade's going to foul that one down the first base line. So one and two on Gabby Meade. In the three hole with one out here, runner on second. And the pitch. Meade's going to dribble it to the shortstop. Kohler going to look over, fire to first. Now a delayed dive into third Ooh. and safe is Natalie Musser. Musser, good base running as Meade got her over on the ground out. So at the plate, the cleanup batter, Brooklyn Sanders. She'll take ball number one. Two down, top of the sixth. Braves trail by one. Natalie Musser standing on third base. Sanders, the DP, two for two with a pair of singles and a run scored. If you remember, they stranded her the last time down at first base. And uh, if Brooklyn can come up with a big single here to tie this one up, could be huge in the outcome of this one. Jenna Malk, the 2-0 pitch to Sanders, strike one. Talked earlier about Brooklyn Sanders, the senior, having, you know, some key at-bats this year, some good at-bats. And uh, the 333 average coming into today, that's uh, going to be a little bit better with her being 2-for-2 two two right now with a pair of singles. You know, it's funny. We talk about some of these kids being here, you know, seems like forever. You know, I just found out. You know, I actually work with uh, Natalie Muster's mother. And, man, I remember Natalie. I didn't realize she was a freshman already. And, yeah. wow, she's, uh, yeah, she's, yeah. Uh, she's a heck of a ball player. Yeah, bright spot for Indian Valley coming up. Uh, you know, Dusty going to be happy, and they say she went. I don't know. That yeah. might have been the first questionable <laughs> call I'd have on blue there. But that was ball number four, in my opinion. But, hey, we'll go with it. It's a full count. We're, we're not doing the, uh, the Major League <laughs> replay on that no, one. No, we're not. We're not going to New York we, on that one. No, we won't. We No Wayne Door instant <laughs> replay on this one. Jenna Malk, the payoff pitch, and Sanders is going to chop at the first base, and a nice play down there by Susie Pelt. Steps on first and retires the side. The Indian Valley Braves strand. Natalie Musser down at third. They trail by one. We move to the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the <laughs> Well, they the changed six. the scoreboard. Bottom Here of the sixth, <laughs> tornadoes coming up after this on Big Z Sports. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at Pat drilling.com reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to four hundred dollars fad here for tmk valley propane 
The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. So Sarah Clark at the plate. She is one for two with a single and a strikeout. Is the second baseman. She's going to sky that one over the dugout into the bleachers down the first base line as we start the bottom of the sixth. Lady Tornadoes lead two to one in a pitcher's duel here. Um, you know, Dover stranded five runners on base. Indian Valley stranded three so far through five and a half. And strike on Clar. For number two. Yeah, anybody you can get on base this game uh, is a hot commodity right yeah. now. And uh, Indian Valley, again, last inning, uh, stranded Natalie Muster on third base there. Just unable to get him on. Remains a run down. Gossett fires high. Little waste pitch there on the rise. 1-2 to Sarah Clar. Second baseman for the... Lady Crimson Tornadoes, Gossett's pitch out of the glove of Weaver for ball number two. Fooled everybody on that. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> she hit it. No, she didn't. <laughs> I saw the umpire look like, where'd that ball end up going? <laughs> the 2-2 two -two from Shelby Gossett to Sarah Clark is outside. And after two early strikes, Clark's had a good at bat here. To run the count full. Doing one for two for the day. Ended up getting a single in the fourth inning. Mm -hmm. The payoff pitch. Oh, a changeup <laughs> strike three. <laughs> Pulled the string, did Shelby Gossett. Eight strikeouts <laughs> for the junior on the mound. Man, you saw Sarah Clark wow. just kind of uh, knees almost buckled there. And like, uh oh, yeah. I, I might be in trouble yeah. in this one. Yeah, she was in trouble was, for out a, number one. Heck of a pitch. Carolyn struck out both times at the plate. She fans it. Strike number one from Gossett. Gossett still pitching strong here in the sixth after pitching yesterday as well, picking up the win. Nine Ks yesterday. She's looking for nine right here on this pitch as she just put two strikes on Kara Lint. Lint trying to make contact. She had a gem of a pitching performance yesterday as well. Gossett's 0-2 pitch. Strike three. Nine strikeouts for Shelby Gossett. Lint is struck out three times now. Madeline Faulkner will come up now. She's one for two with a single and a strikeout at the bottom of the order. Again, just like in that second inning, or third inning rather, if she can get on, you've got the top of the order coming up. But two down and strike number one from Gossett. And I don't think Gossett's messing around. She, she's <laughs> like, look, three up, three down. I only want to throw nine pitches. That's all I want to do. I want to get out of this one and get our bats back up to the plate. Had enough of this, a nice night. Let me go back in the uh, dugout, yeah. get some Gatorade. And right. She might want to head to the pool after this one. Who knows? <laughs> Everybody around here starting to open up their pool. I'm like, dude, you got to remember it's the 15th of April. It'll be snowing I don't next think week. We're, yeah. Right. I don't think we're quite there yet. I'm not worried about snow, but, you know, it was pretty chilly over the weekend. Yeah, I hate to look. we got another game uh, Friday. Yeah, what's, we do. What's the forecast? I haven't even seen it. Well, it uh, initially was... A little bit of rain. We'll check on that between innings. All right. Good point. So the 2-1 from Gossett to Madeline Faulkner. Strike two. Evens the count at twos. Big pitch here for Gossett to try and get out of this. Give Indian Valley their final chance in the top of the seventh. Gossett's 2-2. Two, two. Strike three. Tenth strikeout for Shelby Gossett has pitched a gem here this afternoon. As she retires, Faulkner 
We move to the top of the seventh. Last at bats for Indian Valley. They need one. Back after this on Big Z Sports. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. The past 30 years, the residents in and around the Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff of McInturf Realty for buying and selling their residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all of those communities, there is nothing better than high school sports. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season. And make the call to McInturf Realty, 330-364-SOLD. Or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Welcome back to Dover City Park. Final at-bats for the Indian Valley. Braves 5-6-7 coming up. And strike one on Ashley Baker. And we've got another broadcast coming up tomorrow. Yeah, again, really want to thank our sponsors. You know, haven't gotten out to many games as we wanted to, thanks to Mother yeah. Nature. But, uh, again, really want to thank the sponsors that make this possible. The kids, the coaches, the parents love us out there, you know, coming to these games. We love coming to these yeah, games. Absolutely. It's just a lot of fun. But Wednesday, April 17th, we got Claymont at Garraway softball game. Nick and Shannon will be on that call. And then uh, we're right back on Friday here, April 19th, Dover at New Philly Baseball. Looking yeah. forward to that one. Yeah, first uh, my first baseball game of the year, and it doesn't get any better than uh, Dover Philly in these parts. Again, a th huge thank you to the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency for bringing you all of the coverage. The 2-1 from Jenna Malk is strike number two. So evens the count on Ashley Baker. Baker has struck out both times at the plate. Malk looking for strikeout number eight. Yeah, to your point earlier about the mechanics of throwing underhand pitch, uh, Jenny Malk has not lost any of her uh, speed here. No, and she just got strikeout number eight on the outside part of the plate as she punched out Ashley Baker, and Baker has struck out three times as well. Celeste Rubble to the plate. She's 0 for 2. Oh, looks and like guess what she's done? Here. Oh, we are going to have a yep. pinch batter. Number 24. Sarah Myers. So Myers will pinch bat for Celeste Rummel, who struck out both times at the plate. So Sarah Myers batting 500. I believe she's 1 for 1 on the year. Or, I mean, sorry, 1 for 2 I on the say year. She <laughs> no, what, uh, again. <laughs> You know, right. It's a good thing you it do is. a play but <laughs> It is. It's, it's a good thing that I don't, I'm not, not a mathematician. A mathematician in our uh, <laughs> high school uh, classes here. Yeah, no, they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't hire me as a high school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so Malk, the 0-2 pitch to Sarah Myers. Strike three, nine strikeouts for Jenna Malk. Down to the final at bat, Bella Weaver is one for two. She has an RBI triple back in the second inning that tied this game at one, and she grounded out to the shortstop in her last at bat. Weaver takes ball number one low from Jenna Malk. Malk has pitched a gem here this afternoon, giving up only the one run, nine strikeouts. Bella Weaver, the triple in the first inning, the only RBI for Indian Valley. In the dirt. Ball two. Yeah, Bella Weaver put a ride on that ball to left field. Got the RBI triple. Wind picking up just a bit here in the late evening. Strike number one from Jenna Malk. So two and one now. So Bella Weaver, really good softball game here this afternoon brought to you by the Tuscross Insurance Agency and uh, two quality teams that could go deep into the tournament. Foul tip and the Braves down to their last strike. <laughs> Both teams could go deep, you know? Yeah, and this is, uh, uh, you know, you, you like to see this, you know, scheduled during the regular season well. Uh, again, this is a great uh, test for both teams. Weaver's going to pop that one up. Kohler underneath it and that's the ball game. Laney Kohler retires and it is two to one final. 
the Dover Lady Tornadoes pick up the victory. And we will be back with our Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show and award our McIntyre Realty Player of the Game after this on Big Z Sports. Do you hunt, fish, sow, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. If you're planning a major concrete project, you need the help of Stocker Concrete Company. From precast concrete products to ready mix concrete, sand, gravel, limestone, and concrete block, the professionals at Stocker Concrete can help you get started and keep you on the path to completion using the best materials you can find. Stocker Concrete is the concrete material provider you can count on. See them at 7574 Route 36, Janaden Hutton, or call 740-254-4626. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes good luck this season. Welcome back to Dover City Park. The Dover Lady Crimson Tornadoes pick up the 2 to nothing win in a really good softball game here uh, against the Indian Valley Braves. It all came down to uh, Avery Contini pinch running for Maddie Banton. Uh, I'm sorry, Maddie Bantam, who doubled. And, uh, you know, Avery Contini came around and scored and scored the winning run as a pinch runner. And... Uh, you know, that, that's really the difference in the ballgame. Jenna Malk uh, pitched a gem. She gave up the on, only one run with nine strikeouts. But, uh, Stumpy, I think uh, we agree who our McIntyre Realty player of the game is. And uh, we're going to go with somebody a little different tonight. Yes, yeah, Susie Peltz, a uh, great game for her. Two doubles. Uh, actually scored the uh, first RBI, uh, putting Jenna Malk in at the uh, first inning, get the uh, – Crimson Tornadoes, their uh, first run of the game, and uh, never looked back for a two to two to one run. Yep, the junior first baseman Susie Peltz, our McIntyre Realty Player of the Game, two for three, two doubles, and an RBI in Dover's two to one win over the Indian Valley Braves. Again, tune in tomorrow for another uh, Big Z Sports softball broadcast. Me and Stumpy will be back on Friday for Dover New Philadelphia Baseball Stumpy. It's been fun here this afternoon. Beautiful evening. Yeah, great. Uh, again, nothing. Uh, either team should keep their heads high right now. Win or loss. Uh, again, that was a great game. Like you said earlier, That both these teams are going to go far and uh, a lot of these coaches to, to work with right now and uh, look forward to some good things with them later in the f season. Absolutely. Well, I will see you on Friday. Hopefully awesome. it won't rain. It looks like it's going to rain in the morning. It looks like the afternoon's going to be good. We got, uh, you know, good field over there at Tuscarora Park. I I think they turfed it, didn't they? You know, they not, turf, I think sure they turfed the did. boys' field over there. I thought that's why it was rain in the morning, keep all the dust down for us. Well, that I would be good, but going. I thought it was turf. We'll have to see. It's been uh, the, my first game over there, so we'll have to see. That'll be but, an awesome game. Absolutely. For the Claxon Communications crew, Casey Claxon, Aiden Garbrandt, and Brody Stevens, and for my color man, Aaron Stump, I am Chris Kale, wrapping up our Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show, saying so long from Dover City Park. The Lady Tornadoes win 2-1. to one over Indian Valley. Thanks for watching this Claxon Communications production of High School Sports on the Big Z Sports YouTube channel. For the latest news and scores, 
Follow Big Z Sports on Facebook, on Twitter at Big underscore Z Sports, and on Instagram. Don't miss any of the live stream coverage all season long by simply subscribing for free to Big Z Sports on our YouTube channel. For the best in high school sports coverage, there is only one Big Z Sports.